CataractCoach.com. Soon exfoliation, cataract of the second eye. The first eye was done years ago. It has phimosis of the capsule. So now what do you want to do for the second eye? So zooming in here, look at that. There's the capsule, and you can see all the soon exfoliation material on it. Patient has gotten a lot of doses of 10% fat left from other dilating agents to get this amount of dilation going here. And it looks pretty good. So we're going to do our cataract surgery here. So what should you do? The other eye had surgery years ago and now has a phimotic anterior capsule. Still has reasonable zonular support here in the, in the first eye. So what do you do? Well, first thing you do is you give the other surgeon the benefit of the doubt. Assume that the other surgeon did a really beautiful job because probably that's the case. And the patient has challenges with the tissue, with the anatomy, with the healing, with the physiology, of course. And so in the second eye, what should we do differently here? Now, in the first eye that has the phimosis, we did a YAG laser capsulotomy of the anterior capsule rim at 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock to help break that ring of phimosis, and that's helped stabilize it. So what should we do differently here? Well, you see, we're making our incision. First thing is, we want a big rexus. You've heard me say it before, no baby rexus. We don't want a baby-sized capsule rexus. Don't make a 4-millimeter capsule rexus here. It's more likely you're going to cause issues. So we're going to get a good-sized capsule rexus going. There's the incision. That all looks pretty good. As you know, my forceps here are marked off at 2.5 and 5 millimeters from the tip. People sometimes email me asking which forceps to use. It's on the Cataract Coach website. If you go to the Cataract Coach website and click on the About link on that website, it has everything about me, including my instruments that I use. Now, let's get back to this case here. So we're trying to create a good-sized rexus. Look how slow I'm going. Just taking my time here. I want this to be overlapping the Optic 360, and I want it to be basically five and a half millimeters. I don't want it four. I'm measuring again. Look at that. Measuring the forceps just to be sure. You may be saying, wait a minute. Why are you going clockwise? Don't you normally go counterclockwise when you create a rexus? And my answer is, does it really matter? No. There you go. There's your capsule rexus. Looks pretty good. Just about five to five and a half millimeters. Now, the nucleus removal will be straightforward. This video is a complete cataract case. We're going to show you the whole case start to finish. I have a whole section of that. If you go to the Cataract Coach website, you go to a, a complete list of articles and videos and click on the complete cataract cases. Those are all only cases where I'm operating. There are no guest surgeons there. Complete cataract cases are only me operating because, like I told you before, I'm a special snowflake. And those are unedited cases like this, shown start to finish, no edits required. So on those cases, you can learn a lot. You can see exactly what we're doing here. Now, here we go. Here comes a chop. Split that nucleus into two halves. So again, this is a little tilt and chop. So tilt it out of the bag a little bit and do a little chop. Not a very dense nucleus, so that's going to make life pretty easy. And we'll emulsify this pretty easily. Now, I know what you're asking yourself. What else should you do in this case? Well, um, should you put in a capsule retention ring? I mean, having a CTR in the bag can certainly help with the issue of phimosis, right? And the patient's other eye had surgery, let's say, 10 years ago, and has a little bit of phimosis. And, you know, we stopped that with a YAG laser capsulotomy in the anterior capsule rim. Should I put a CTR in this eye also now, as well as the IOL, to help prevent the phimosis? And that's a pretty reasonable option, a reasonable approach. And that could be a case. Let's see what I do in this case. So, again, rotating around, there's one half of the nucleus in the bag. Bring that half up. We can then further chop it. There's the half. Or maybe even just demulsify. It doesn't even look that dense. By the way, eyes in primary, that looks pretty good. It is in the focus. That looks good. And good draping. Yay! Alrighty. Remember, you, you can submit your videos. We get 30 to 50 videos sent to us every week for Cataract Coach for evaluation. And the link is on cataractcoach.com. Check out that website. There's so much great material there. I think you'll really enjoy it. Lots of great resources, free book, free curriculum series, and a fantastic search engine, better than anything you'll find on YouTube. And all the links there click back to YouTube, so don't worry. Again, here, cortex removal now. Cleaning this up very nicely. And then again, should you polish the bag? Now, I think doing a capsule polish is probably a good idea. I think there's probably no harm in doing it as long as you're relatively gentle. So why not polish the undersurface, the anterior capsule rim, hopefully remove some of those lens epithelial cells that end up causing issues later. Now, I'm still debating my mind. What should we do? Do you think we should put a CTR in this eye or not? Now, you saw during the surgery, everything looked pretty stable. The capsule rexus was torn very easily. Didn't seem like there was a lot of wrinkling. There didn't seem to be any, you know, zonal laxity. You know what? Let me just put the, the lens in first. So here we go. Let's do a little capsule polishing, a little capsule polisher, cleaning that underservice, the anterior capsule rim, and maybe I'm just making myself happy, but I think there's no harm in doing this, and maybe there's a little bit of a help. So we'll go ahead and take our time and clean that up. 
And then let's just put the lens in the bag. Let's, let's forego doing a CTR for now. And then we'll watch the patient closely. Probably the most important thing I can do is to watch the patient closely at the post-op visits. At the three-month mark or six or 12-month mark, seeing the patient and looking. Is there any evidence of like that capsular phimosis of the anterior rim starting? And if so, why not just use that YAG laser that's sitting right there in your clinic and do a little relaxing cuts at 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock around the anterior capsule rim. There's the rex, as you can see, 6 millimeter optic. That rex looks pow, bang on. About a 5.5 millimeter rex, perhaps. Going behind here, removing all the viscoelastic from the capsule bag. And we're going to leave it be. So in this case, we're going to leave it be. I think the patient's going to have a nice result. And again, we'll watch the patient in the post-op period. You know, you got to watch these patients. These patients need a primary care eye doctor, right? They need to have someone, whether it's you or someone else you work with, or someone in the community, to see the patient, you know, on a once-year basis. Remember, we do their cataract surgery, but, you know, there's still no promise that you may not, that you'll get an age-related disease or not, right? You could get age-related macular degeneration, as you know, glaucoma is often age-related. It's more increasing in, in incidence as the patient gets older. Yo, do you see that? There's a little nuclear chip there, a little uh, epinuclear fragment. Get that washed out of the eye. Okay. I told you this is an unedited video shown start to finish. It's not a horse race. That's why we're taking our time here. All right. That looks all pretty clean now, right? Let's take a look. Seal up the main incision here. Do you see the little fragments there behind the optic? In the anterior hyaloid face, there are little tiny fragments of the lens material. Oh, look at that. Another big chunk. Yo, I'm glad we took our time here. Let's go back inside and remove that too. But I was saying, you know, there's some degree of xylopathy, a little bit, because you have little tiny fragments of lens material that are, have gone through the xylopathy support fibers and are now in the anterior hyaloid face and burger space, basically. Those are those little fragments there. And that's why we want to quell inflammation in the post-op period. So again, there, this patient is going to have a very nice result. And again, we'll watch them carefully. Leave a comment below. What would you do differently in this situation? And remember, check out that website. So much great material.